Uh, I am going to call this one mine or mine own. I am. Uh, I currently. I'm going to call the lava lamp hypothesis. Uh, I believe the entire universe is a lava lamp. I've uh, recently made a post about that. I'll read it. All life is a liquid. All matter has a density. The frequency density of matter dictates how fluid a substance is. A rock is a high density object that takes a long time to stretch and mold. Water is a lower density and thus flows easier. Air is a is higher and vacuum the least dense. All life is like a fractal molecular structure of hyperdense attracted particles that flow through space and time like the lava does in a lava lamp. And that's the la lava lamp hypothesis. So basically what I would mean now I set that all in, in like a minute, uh, now I likely need to stretch it just to, to like uh, make sure that there's something you could watch. Uh, but I think you can expand on that, well I don't know. Well then technically we as humans when we propel out of the earth we're just uh, like, like, like when you, when you, uh, when we build a rocket and the rocket fires off into space, basically that's like a, a part of the fractal or like a, a bubble in the lava lamp that, that has somehow formed into that rocket and then, uh, blasted out, out of the earth, uh, because, because, you know, it's, it's, it's happening evolutionarily in a space and time. Uh, because of evolution, because we are evolving, we are, you know, we are the universe, we are part of evolution of the universe in, uh, in general. And then it's fractal. It's an idea that I've had for a while, but I've mainly been calling it fractal. The lava lamp part is, is relatively new. Um, I, I had a sort of concept that I knew some, t some way to that, that, that thing, but I couldn't really describe it into words that made it like visually more clear uh to other people that that like i and i I'm, and that's why i started actually wondering about gravity that actually propelled me into the idea of gravity is gravity a force that attracts everything or is gravity a lack of anything which de therefore makes sure that everything falls into the earth and then because everything is falling into the earth then, 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 technically, if you stay, see it as a lava lamp, then what you could see is like everything falls into it, and then some things be, uh, they know, you know, um, are propagated back outward. Because, well, in a lava lamp, is because of the heat. I don't think um, the things that flow back out are because of a um, because of. Uh, what what's it called? Uh, that it is because of a force or or because of heat or whatever. It's more because of there's a lack of anything. The the lighter something becomes, we say lighter because it then flows out in in. But but there's no of course no such thing as lighter. And ju just like there's no such thing as heat. Heat is like a force. Um, and we experience it as heat, we call it heat, but it isn't actually heat, right? It's like this force that is placed upon my skin and that therefore makes me feel pain. Uh, heat is like pain and then therefore we call it heat, but like a rock experiences heat as well. If a rock were alive and weren't feeling heat is it then heat is like then then it to the rock it becomes just a thing that is on it that is like force on it like like um uh you know you know i uh, there's like some humidity in the room i can barely feel it i can but there's uh, just as much humidity right now in the room as there is heat in the room. But the heat is the thing that I feel, the humidity I feel less. 
uh, I feel it nonetheless, but it's not something that is going to bother me. If I feel water, water on my skin, it's not going to bother me and be as sen I, I'm gonna not, not going to be as sensitive to it as it. I'm trying to find a good um, example of something where. Uh, yeah, maybe like there's x-rays all around me. I in no way like like there's photons and gamma rays uh, In the room everywhere you go You don't feel those things because you're not sensitive to them You never ever 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 would have known they even existed unless some scientist told you like there's gamma rays and all those things coming from outer space because it's like radiation and radiation is a constant it's everywhere um it comes from the sun it comes from whatever distant galaxy it comes from everywhere and anywhere and so heat it doesn't really exist heat is like a thing that we experience because a certain force um uh is interacting with our body that our body responds to because if there's too much heat our body decays and 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 you know is harmed so therefore it had it has developed this system to feel and detect heat heat and it is part of that same lava lamp uh dynamic it's like like this thing is like like you you don't have to think of it as like uh that it is necessarily all inter well it is intertwined everything like interacts with every other part of the system and you know for example you might have a, a lava lamp effect is rain you know uh you have the the water that is like in the ocean in in, in under the surfaces that dries up and it evaporates you know becomes lighter and then rises up like in a lava lamp and then at some point it becomes too cold or too you know it, it to dense together again so that it it has to fall back down on the earth um which is literally a lava lamp effect and 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 the thing is that like other things go go with it as well as like um like uh, little bits of sand or whatever can also rise up which is why you have like i think there's like things like tropical storms where they're like after the rain everything is full of dirt or fishes like little tiny fishes uh that are you know i believe i don't know if that is fake news i do believe uh that such a thing exists fishy fishy rain yeah the most unbelievable types of rain on the planet yes so it does exist and that also explains fishy rain, yeah, that explains how evolution happens, right? How fish end up in, in, in ponds and stuff, if fishy rain exists. But it looks, it looks incredibly unbelievable. The fish are really, really rather large for something that could rain. I don't know how... Oh, tornadoes. But there's no such... Is there a thing like I would... Like there's like tiny... Oh, that would be probably then not a thing. Um, No, but okay. So, so that is part of the lava lamp effect. But it also happens at different scales. When you look at the earth, the earth co is composed of different types of... Um, elements. And those elements are always... You know, you have the plate tectonic shifts... We see them as like, you know, they're just plates or people tend to think them as like just plates that are moving around the earth. But really it's like, it is, it is matter that is like an ocean, you know, um, moving around. And, 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 and then life uh, evolves on top of it and inside of it like worms and stuff like that. But it's like this immense uh, organism fluid like thing and then it forms but because some t particles and things start to interact with each other it forms different things like quartz and and, and sort of crystals and uh, all sorts of 
of element uh, you know you know fr f structures and stuff like that but it's all it's all it's all like a lava lamp it's all flowing uh and and then and then propagating out and at what point then then what what is then space time it like uh, rocks and stuff are like floating in the air and then flying away because of the circumstances that are forced upon it and then how does it fall okay gravity is is a a, a quantum gravity okay this so that opens up the idea of like quantum gravity and how does quantum is that even really a question the, I, I feel like Suskind always says like that's like um a big question like how to um combine einstein with qu with quantum mechanics i feel like that should is that not like pretty straightforward that like um uh you know i think einstein is like had the idea that the u universe was like a mechanistic um idea well if you just have like a dot that is propagating wave at a constant density and a constant same pattern then at some point it becomes mechanistic uh while the structure underneath it is like uh what is a good um that it arises from 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 all the elements that are interacting with each other and that the 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 the, the, the waves themselves are are um they don't judge how do you say that like they they if you have like a a a particle that is a wave and it's waving it's like let's say 7 or 9 let's say nine for to make it like uh, divisible by three like that it's making nine waves and then building you build a structure with particles that have nine waves that like build something towards somewhere in the middle it doesn't matter that like the waves around it aren't used i think that the idea of the mechanism uh, comes from the idea that one thing starts and then builds on top of the next and everything is like uh, uh, part of the hierarchy of uh, everything else but then you could say that like everything rests on waves and that the waves that are outside are pushing everything in um and that that maybe that's why they exist even um i don't know how to fully formulate that yet but i am kind of sort of happy that i had the lava lamp idea um i do need to i'm currently working on how to make a uh i'm going to model hoover trains I have an idea for Hoover trains uh, and Hoover whatever. I think it should be there should be a way to make it uh, float. That is, you know, if you think of the high, uh, the lava lamp thingy, then all what you have to do is find uh, common an, an element that can float on top of something else or that is propelled by. The problem is with things that are propelled by the the elements that are on earth is that if there were at any given point in time uh elements that are repelled by the elements that are on earth that they are likely going to be very very far away from earth because it's propelled by by um by what we are here and then maybe those elements are you know you'll find those on different pl planets because uh that's where they all lumped and clumped up i firmly believe that not all elements on earth are all the elements that exist uh i don't believe that if you can live 
that you know that the macro scale is more like the micro and of course we we would say the, in this case the normal scale but like um if you look at the idea of uh you know a, a man in a desert you know is not going to have the same abundance of materials as someone in in the middle of a jungle but someone in a jungle isn't going to uh, have an idea about their world like someone in the desert and so i do believe now i am not firmly established in um what the science is and how much they know about what uh, other planets are made up of uh, i do believe that there's likely going to i wouldn't I feel hesitant. If you look at history, you ha always have to like question scientists and what is coming out or what they deduce about something. Because scientists are often wrong. Uh, doctors as well. Uh, we don't do exorcisms and bloodlettings anymore for to, you know, as a, you know, uh, I don't think any qualified doctor uh, practices such thing as anymore um ironically thank god for that um because of the exorcisms <laughs> oh god um and then aliens aliens i don't want to there's still some weird stigma around talking about aliens, but I do believe. I, 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 I become more firmly convinced about the existence of aliens and, and like, I don't, it, it's actually the idea that we, we, that there are aliens that visit us isn't really that weird because we are going to now over the next couple thousands of years going to be doing exactly the thing that we say aliens do to us uh, or we say like like people we describe as like kind of paranoid or weird or thinking ideas that are like uh, completely bogus um, if you think about it now of course it, it has to do with sensationalism and certain uh, sensational people that you know claim things that are really not true but if you think about it if we are going to start inhabiting other planets you know we are literally going to foster life on planets that don't have life on them yet why would we not be exactly that right why would we be um anything different from from them or from that or why 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 would it it it's perfectly possible that we uh, life forms because of spores um which is likely because there are a certain life forms that can survive in space very tiny tiny uh, life forms and that we form because of spores but if we are formed because of spores, then there has to be some sort of source where life came from. Uh, that at some point in time or on some planet, we like to think that life formed on this planet. It might not have formed on this planet. It might... but. Li we we think of humans as uh, um, uh, separate from nature and whatever, uh, which is which stems from religion, um, uh, which has very much permeated throughout uh, society, which is completely bogus and completely uh life and evolution doesn't care that you are human. Life cares about survival. Life cares about survival, not of any certain species, but or or of humans. Life cares about uh, the survival of life. Uh, so that's why it creates, it recreates itself in different forms, 
in order to then uh, be able to you know survive and thrive and find ways to survive and thrive in in vastly different circumstances and but it does seem to propel towards intelligence and towards more and more sufficient efficient and uh, self-sufficient and intelligent beings which is uh, a question then that why does that keep happening why um, am I capable of likely like you can tell throughout history and some I want to make some certain claims but certain claims aren't really backed up by uh, science or history but that you could uh, hypothesize but like if you look at history animals are small and then become bigger and then they adapt to the environment and they tend to well uh, we don't that's why, why I say like history doesn't necessarily back it up but like how smart were dinosaurs and are there have there been other life forms that were pretty intelligent uh, maybe not in a sense that um they built houses or any or well i i the more i look at it like building houses and stuff like that isn't necessarily a really intelligent behavior it's a pattern of intelligence <clears throat> um which then going back to the lava lamp part like how does that fit in is it just that like the lava lamp you know all the particles and whatever that are chaining together and repelling each other that they are uh, just fractalizing and then because of the fractalization give a, uh, a possibility a probability of life forming because you know they life is just another part of the bulb that is then you know flowing out of the earth and then then moves around on the earth because of the forces that have been put that have built the, that that thing it's like literally like everything is like blobby and we try to impose structure but structure is also just a fractal uh, if, if you, you know, if you think of the lava lamp thing, you don't have to like, uh, a lava lamp is very flowy and blobby, like, life is, is a lot more complex and just saying life is a lava lamp would be, be very simplistic and, and not, not very thorough, but like, a lava lamp where also like the structures can form into more like square thingies, um, and then things that are more structurally formed like houses that humans build houses because we are just you know stacking things it's difficult to explain this idea um, and how I see it um, the way you would see it is like we are just you know a bulb and we 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 see ourselves as like oh we are building but more it's like like everything in history leads up to you building a house and because everything in history leads up to you building a house you are literally like the blobs like the people that build a house are like blobs that go to build the house that that like mold the house because they are they literally they are all particles that have because of so many different factors and forces have come up to this point where they are at at a at a part where there are uh, certain elements near that they then push and then sh k build into a house so all those blobs are creating those those things and and then because you can state like we think we are alive but who says we are alive 
A life isn't a concept that exists in nature. Nature is static. Nature is um, ambiguous about you being alive, about, um, you know, we as humans come up with this idea like this person is alive, this dog is alive, this person isn't alive, this person used to be alive, but like an animal doesn't go around and think like the gazelle is alive or that. It just sees like this is a thing that moves, that has, uh, that I biologically uh, already know that I am attracted to this animal and want to eat it. And therefore I will eat it. Um, and it, it's ambiguous about whether it's dead or alive. It's a feeding source uh, that has to be caught and eaten to the animal or or like a plant or or a tree or like some fruit or vegetable whatever it might be it's like life is ambiguous about the fact that whether or, or not something is alive or or that uh schrodinger well that's not schrodinger but like um is he dead or is it alive that made me uh think about schrodinger uh so there's like no Um, I am not fully aware about how to take the lava hypothesis further or the lava lamp hypothesis. I think, you know, volcanoes, lava lamp literally says it themselves, like volcanoes are a good example of, of lava lamp hypothesis, like, like lava is just like a liquid and it's literally like just molten uh earth and and uh, metals and and whatever that it's spewing out at that point um coming out of the earth like a liquid so everything is a liquid a frequency uh of very dense atomic structures and quarks and gluons and leptons and uh, all those other and it fractalizes into us and our being and then wh wh where does that lead like why does life evolve into ever more and what all other are the other things that we could evolve into that we currently haven't evolved into questions questions I have questions